Welcome to another episode of Behind the Shadows. I'm your host, Harvey Guillen, a.k.a. Guillermo de la Cruz, the show where we talk about all things shadows with the cast, crew, and celebrity friends. Today's guest is the one, the only, Myrna Cabello, who plays Guillermo de la Cruz's mom. On today's episode, we will read a letter from Guillermo's mom to her loving son and how important it is to support your loved ones, no matter who they are. Stay tuned. I'm behind the shadows. Breathing is so overwhelming. Heartbeats are ahead, so tell me why would anyone want to be alive? Death might have a reputation before she arrives, but trust me, we have way more fun in the afterlife. We have way more fun in the afterlife. Oh my gosh. Well, we are back. Uh, and I'm so excited for today's guest because it is long overdue. It's the one, the only, Myrna Cabello. Oh, <laughs> hola, mi amor. Hola, mami. <laughs> so for... ¿Cómo estás, mijo? <laughs> bien, bien, bien. Gracias. Um, for the fans out there um, who are putting this together... Actually, uh, Myrna has played my mom on What We Do in the Shadows for the last couple of seasons. And this yes. week's episode was very emotional and very sweet and such a great, um, just a great introduction to what the, the life with Guillermo at home feels like and with his family and with his aunt yeah. and uh, cousin coming to visit. And, and sometimes what we do is uh, we pretend to live a certain life because we want to impress our family. And sometimes we're not honest with our family. So this week's episode mm. was very much that. But before we get into that, I want to talk about how was the process to, uh, to auditioning for Mama de la Cruz? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I got the call to come into audition and they were saying, you know, improv and stuff. And I, and I love improv. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. And I'd watched all the shows. And so I was super excited, went in and, um, and yeah, I just didn't, you know, I tried to just like let go and like, I know you guys use the cameras and stuff. So I was trying to be in the moment and, uh, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> it worked like, it works it works to let go sometimes right and just be like i'm just let it be exactly let and be. and the idea that i love your approach to playing my mom from day one if you recall um the the episode where we meet guillermo's mom is really sweet when he goes back to live with her uh when he leaves the household and she's in the kitchen and she's making buñuelos and making, you know, and she's making noise with the fridge as well because it's been acting up. <laughs> and I just love that we got to improvise that scene a little bit. And it was so organic to what it felt like. It would have felt me talking to my mom in my Mexican household. And yeah. it was important to me that the role of my mom um, feels as authentic as possible, you know, and 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 being that, you know, uh, and Myrna, what do you want to tell everyone uh, a little bit about yourself, your background, where you come from and all of that? Well, I am originally from Austin, Texas, and I'm from Mexican immigrant parents. So I'm like really proud of that. And um, I started acting, I mean, since little itty bitty doing school plays and stuff so you know but you're also and then, a singer um, you're beautiful you have a beautiful voice uh, a beautiful singing voice oh, <laughs> thank you very much yes my husband and i are singer songwriters together so we have a little our little duo that we do myrna and the bulldog but um yeah so we have a lot of fun with that and it kind of you know it ties in with the same thing performing right mm -hmm. you perform it's all the same right yeah but um yeah, so my background is, you know, you know, and I did a lot of theater. I did a lot of, um, I didn't really do TV or anything until college. And that's when I decided, I had a theater teacher tell me, he was like, you know, I think you're more of a TV actor. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <But> <laughs> I wasn't quite sure you? what that was. There <laughs> you. But I was. I wasn't quite sure what that was, you know, at the time, back in the day before all the social media and everything. But so I ventured into it, got an agent and then just started uh, during college. And just, yeah, it's been fair. I, I have to say being bilingual has helped me so much, yes. so much. I thank my parents for that every, 
you know, every day. It's like being able to speak two languages is yeah. just so amazing, and you I, know? I'm so grateful. You're right. Like, we have similar, you know, my parents are Mexican immigrants as well, and and we live in California. And I remember I, I was very adamant about having my mom be played by um, – an actress with Mexican descent. Like I was just like, it's very important that I feel that Guillermo, you know, and I remember telling that to Paul Sims and, and him being open and listening to that. And um, because you could easily, you know, sometimes Hollywood likes to categorize uh, Latina people into one category. It's like, yeah, she's, you know, she's, uh, she could be your mom. She's a Mexican mom. Yeah. And I was like, well, she's Salvadoranian. I mean, it's still under the umbrella of, you know, Latina and whatnot, but different culture, even the idea of like the Buñuelos was the topic of conversation. I remember that. Yeah. Do you remember? Yes, I remember that. Yeah. I do. I remember that. And you saying, and you and I came, was so cool because I like came on set and you were like, these are not Mexican Buñuelos. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, you're right. And immediately it was that connection. And we're like, oh, this is so cool. The authenticity that you like, you like uh, wanted and that you, you know, you got. Yeah. And 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 to be with the crew and and creative team that's open to that idea to, you know, to listen to how representation does matter. And the idea that, you know, not just only as, you know, Latina characters, but as uh, Latina people who represent the culture and and we want to be seen in a certain light. How important do you think it yeah. is for that representation to, to come through? I think it's extremely important. You can't lump, you know, that you said it perfectly when you want to have an umbrella. But I think that if you have the opportunity to do that, I think it just makes it richer. Mm-hmm. Then you have the little details mm-hmm. of every culture that can come out, you know, mm-hmm. and then as just for people to understand also, I mean, because the media, you know, people learn from that and learning the differences. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. It's like learning all these things about different cultures. And then for me as an actor, having that, you know, that authenticity, even more so, I feel so at home you know i was like yeah this feels good (laughs) yeah and it's nice to like really be able to voice that because i think for so long we're taught you know um to be grateful for a job and and whatnot and we are yeah. you know and we're very hard working but it's also good to speak up and say you know hey this might be i don't think that's the right you know or because you'd be surprised how many people come up to me like at different like cons or whatnot and they say that yeah. scene our scene together as as you know as son and mother that they say that scene with your mom oh, I cried and I was like oh my gosh why it's like because I felt like it was the first time I saw like myself on screen I could be having that dialogue with my mom in the kitchen and that's rarely done like it's really like a natural organic just like yeah. dialogue happening and the buñuelos they bring up the buñuelos a lot and I keep thinking, what if I didn't speak up? What if I did? If I gave up and I was like, oh well, whatever they picked is fine, and Someone would have noticed. Someone said, those aren't Mexican Buñuelos. Yeah. I, it takes you out. It takes you out of the of what it does. we want to present as being authentic and real. And it does take you out. And that's unfortunate because there would have been a moment to make it right. And we did. I feel like we did. Yes. <laughs> we did I know. It. You did. You were like gangbusters. I was like, you go. Yeah. I'm, be- I'm totally behind him. <laughs> but you're right. It's when you bring up like, in, you know, the whole inclusion, when you see that and you feel like somebody cared enough to like do that you know mm-hmm. it's it is very special it's making me like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is it's special making- yeah it, it is. is special what we're doing this episode was even more special i feel because of what's happening with guillermo and so guillermo in this episode yeah. this week you know invites um his mom and his family over for dinner and pretends mm-hmm. to live in this house which is the mansion that they live in because he thinks that everyone's out of town um and unfortunately for him, Naja is still there. And we find out that uh, at the last minute, he's putting on this persona of, of, of more success than he is and, and uh, an aspirational living where he's wearing Versace, you know, shirts, uh, and, and then the jeans, the, the couture jeans and the, and the Louis Vuitton shoes. Like he's putting on this whole yeah. thing. Because at this point, Guillermo has started embezzling money from the club. <laughs> and la, 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 la. I don't know what you're la, saying. La, 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 la. <laughs> and at this point, um, 
because he realized <laughs> that he's committed himself to a job for 13 years that has never promoted him, has never seen him in a different light than a servant. And he's starting to feel that he has to take matters into his own hands. And he does. Mm-hmm. He's not, I, I always th- I justify this because it was a, a question I had with the creative team. I was like, I don't want to feel like I'm stealing, you know, and it's like, well, you know, you're thinking about it. You're like, you're not stealing. You're taking what's rightfully you've earned. <laughs> Like yeah. you've earned this, you worked for this, but you just never got paid. He doesn't get paid. So af- after 13 years of service, even with minimum wage, you would have gotten something. Yeah. <laughs> so he's taking back matters into his own hands. And it's so funny to find out that Naja is doing the same. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of funny. We have way more fun in the afterlife. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Throughout my personal journey and professional career, life has had its fair share of tricks and treats. I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have access to therapy to help me through those tricky experiences. BetterHelp has made therapy accessible. BetterHelp Online Therapy will assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. If you ever considered therapy but thought getting started was too complicated or expensive, I assure you it's worth it. And BetterHelp takes all the stress away. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. And getting therapy every week is as easy as a few clicks on your laptop or phone. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional therapies in all 50 states. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Shadows Podcast. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy at BetterHelp.com slash Shadows Podcast. Now back to the show. But the, the really sweet moment in the episode here was when it's, it's, it's basically uh, uh, revealed that the family is you know uh, vampire hunters they're all oh, know. you know and that was uh so cool to read because i always thought about like you know the family and the lineage of where did he get this from where did the van helsing side come from which i think there's still yeah. more to tap into with the family and i think we will you know in the future and but for yeah. this episode it was so nice to like see oh my gosh even the grandma even the grandma i know right casa yeah. vampiros you know like she's I like know. <laughs> see i know that was amazing it was so that was great. amazing and that scene where naja finally um is introduced and you all sense something's wrong and you're tingling and it's getting mm-hmm. warm and <laughs> and all that and then yeah. you realize she's a vampire and you chase her down the hallway and I get in front of her and to save her life, I finally, finally come out. Hi. And what um, what was that like for you when you're playing <laughs> my mom? Oh, my God. It was the most beautiful moment. Yeah. I'm like, I'm starting to get teary eyed. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Why? Because it was you, my son, like. You know, I, I love you, right? And it's just like seeing you accept who you are and feeling, you know, brave enough to face the family and say, this is what I am. Yeah. And that was just, to me, such a wonderful moment for your character. Because you, you keep so much hidden in the show, you know? Mm-hmm. All the time, all the episodes. It's always like you're, you're second. You're, oh, you're <laughs> secondary. Mm. And you accept that. And you're okay with it. Because you have aspirations and you feel that this is what I'm supposed to do to get what I want. And not be able to voice your voice. And so it was really special for me. It was really on so many levels. And yet, of course, you executing it so beautifully. There's, I mean, I didn't have to do anything except look at your face. <laughs> Just look at your face. It and was, I was like. So emotional. It was such, I remember shooting that mm-hmm. and, and, no, and then looking at each other and I was like, oh, this is really heavy um, because we are making a comedy. We'd love to have fun and make jokes and that's all great. Yeah. And we find the lightness in a really serious situation. But for some reason, this coming out episode for Guillermo was so, um, I don't know that the it felt just heavier to, but also a, a moment of of uh, breath, 
a moment of holding space and a moment of relief where, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just like this weight was taken off and, and it was just this beautiful moment and we still made it fun. You know, we still made it fun. And yeah, I think yeah. it was, yeah. was it uh Frankie who says, uh, I was, I was say Frankie. Work, <laughs> yeah. It was just like, you don't work at the railroad or something like that. It's just like, <laughs> Oh, or, or he says, um, he says, oh, yeah, we knew. Like, he's like, what yeah, do you think, yeah, we're blind? Like, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, right, like, right. He, like, yeah. brushed it off, and we went back to, like, you know, and there was this moment we all hug, and, and it's really great. But that's not always a story, you know, usually that ends that way, especially, right, right. Um, I feel like, in, di in many different cultures. And coming out yes. is a huge deal and you know a reminder that there's no expiration date to come out there's no um mm -hmm. yeah you must feel comfortable in your own skin when the time is right and no one should pressure you unfortunately for guillermo in this moment it was it just shows how much love he has for his you know for his housemates that he you were about to kill nasha like you were about to yeah. kill her and he, that's what he used to be to reflect off and be like stop stop, stop, yeah. stop, stop, stop. he's not you know she's not blah blah because yeah. I, I get, you know, and saying it out loud and yeah. that's what made everything pause for a really quick yeah. moment and having that power yeah. and how detrimental was that moment that I needed to share that really big secret at that, mo at that time, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. And how you'd been holding it too, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Holding it for so long. Yeah. And just for you, you know, it's you crazy. could see it in your face. Yeah. The way that you like did it was just like, and you know how we do several takes, Yeah, you know, all the time. Each time was just so powerful. It's just it was so powerful. I think we must have done at least, I mean, they were all like different for me. They felt right every time we did it, but in a different yeah. form, there were some that were more emotional. There were some takes that were like, I, I remember yeah. there's one take that I was, I couldn't, I just couldn't stop sobbing. You know, I just couldn't stop. Yeah. And it was cathartic in a way, just because it was releasing yeah. all of this like energy that Guillermo has carried for his whole life. Yeah. And I think because he couldn't, um, it starts with something, right? You, you want to be honest about everything, but it starts with being honest about who you are. And this episode was yes. the perfect, epitome of definition of that like he's not pr he's pretending to be someone he's not he's pretending to be this guy in this outfit he's trying to put yeah. smoke in mirrors and he's trying to say i live in the house uh you can't be comfortable in the home you're living until you're comfortable in the body that you're living and in, in the, the home in, in your, in your own home. physical home yeah and that was right. what it was he uh, he finally opened the window and let it out and it was just like so beautiful and such a release and i love that they did that with the character and the writers and this is the yeah. year that it happened so it's official you know guillermo is gay and he's come out and yes is, yes you can Yay! celebrate <laughs> Yay! live your truth yes you know yeah so that's beautiful for you know it's just me because i was i was relating to you not just as your your mom tv mom but as a person mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. having, you know, gay friends, having, you know, having every spectrum, you know, in my family. And mm -hmm. then I actually had someone come out to me, which I was so special oh, wow. because they felt they couldn't, someone in my family, but I don't want to, you know, no, that's totally. their story no, that's to tell about mine. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm just saying that it was such a beautiful moment for me because I was like, Oh my God, you're so loved. You know, it's like, and I feel so happy for you that you're able to celebrate, you know? And that's how I felt for you. I felt that moment too. Yeah. Like, it's like, mijo, <laughs> mijo. Yeah. yeah. What do they always tell us? You're enough. You're enough. You're enough. You're enough. Everything that you are, my love, you're <laughs> enough. And what, you know, and you just present yourself to the world. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And that someone felt so comfortable and, and sharing that and opening it with you. But you do you do give that aura when you're on set, not only as your character, obviously, you know, playing my mom is beautiful. And I couldn't have imagined anyone else playing my mom. And it's just that you do, uh, you know, you you have this energy about you that's very warm and welcoming and makes people feel like they can be completely open in, in, in themselves around mm -hmm. you, which is why I love, you know, when I meet new people and actors and 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 you did something that was so special that no other actor has done on the show that I really loved actually was when you got to set to get into character, to build this foundation between us, 
you gave me handwritten letters. Mm -hmm. And I have those letters still right here. And, oh my God. and they're, they're really beautiful and they're detailed and they're in Spanish and which I really love. And as I was reading them, um, and I won't necessarily read them all out loud, but they're very beautiful and they're just, um, very like well connected to what these characters are and using words that like, you know, like, you know, like proud, like being proud, uh, to be your mom, you know, you know, and then making proud of your grandmother. You said that in, in here. And it's just like, you know, giving me like animo and like, you know, encouragement. Yeah. And, you know, and then saying the backstory that's in here, which is really great, is that there was a time where, you know, you fell ill. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. that you wrote that? You know, yeah. cuando me enfermé y tú estabas tú pequeño, como nos ayudabas. Like it's like when you were little and we fell ill, you would help out me and your dad. Yeah. You know, I know it was difficult for you. Yo sé que fue difícil para ti. You know, me dio tanta pena que apenas llegaste y te y se fregó el refrigerador. <laughs> <laughs> Which translates to, I'm so embarrassed. I know you just got here, but the fridge <laughs> broke down. <laughs> so help me out again, baby. But you, oh you managed to incorporate like real tenderness, sweetness, uh, humor uh, into a letter that you didn't have to do that. You know, you didn't have to go to a set and do that. And most people could easily be like, oh, thanks, whatever. But it really was great to read this because it gave me a sense of a bigger connection to you, you know, uh, not just as, as, as Myrna as like the actress, but like as the person who's playing my mom. And it, I think yeah. it, it really kind of resonates on screen. And I, and it's because of things, most people will go out of their way to do something like that. So I want you to know that I still have that letter. And oh, <laughs> that warms my heart. I, I know. It just. I travel with it from I Toronto. I, I packed it <gasps> safely and I brought it up. So, yeah, thank you for this. And the fans should know how. Absolutely. How great you are. Absolutely. Oh, right back at you. Right back at you. I mean, everything that you've just said, I'm just going, well, hello. It's like, <laughs> you. We have way more fun in the afterlife. If you haven't heard already, it's smooth sack summer. That's right. This is the summer to keep your balls cool while still looking hot with Manscaped. The leader in below the bell grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving our pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. Dive head first into smooth sack summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with our code SHADOWS. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare that summer body. Inside this package, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop revival toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? Beach, lake, or shower, this razor will devour even the strongest eternal pubes. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code SHADOWS, manscaped.com. That's 20% plus free shipping with code SHADOWS at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind. Being on set, you know, and like some people don't realize sometimes you come on set. We didn't get to meet before that first scene. Mm -hmm. Like we just met like right before we started working. Right. And the Buñuelo stuff. So we don't get to meet like weeks before or anything. So to me, it was important to bring that connection with you, to have that from the very beginning, but to, for it to be authentic. Again, with the authentic, there's authenticity in culture. There's authenticity also in feelings and love. You know, I really wanted that to come through. And I thought about it. And that's when I was like, you know what? I don't really know a lot of the backstory about us, but I can create what I believe happens mm -hmm. and how I feel about you. And and that's how the letter all started. And then I was like, I want to tell you at first, I was like, should I give it to him? I don't know. Because <laughs> it was like one thing, you know, when you're just like, is this too, what, what, what should I do with it? Is it for me or is it? And then I was like, no, because once I met you, you know, you're such a loving, giving person. And so, so open too. 
you oh. made me feel like from the very beginning when I came on set, I was like, you were like right there. You were open. You were like talking to me like we were connected. Mm-hmm. Do you know? So, so that's why, and you brought me in about that. Again, the Buñuelos, you brought me into that. You could have, you know, other actors could have easily said like, that's, I'm, you know, doing this on my own. No, you brought me in because you wanted me to be a part of it. And that to me, that's like, that's like gold on the set, Mm. you know, because once you can have that, it's easy to make that connection and to feel comfortable. But yeah, and then I was like, yeah, he he needs to get the letter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you did give it to me because it really yeah. warmed my heart. And it did set me in a different mind space and, and connection with the character. And it's, uh, you know, and it's it's great. And I, and I try to do that. I try to be, like you said, thank you for those kind words. It's very nice. Like yeah. just to be as open and welcoming to, you know, anyone who comes to our set. Uh, just because we're building something here together. And, it, you know, all of us yeah. are in it together. And so... If we can just connect us up and we're making a comedy, you know what I mean? We're having fun, yeah. but it's so grounded that it's like, you know, yes, we have vampires and yes, we have all these, uh, you know, characters and, and creatures and whatnot, but the humans in the show have to feel real and they have to feel authentic yeah. and they have to feel grounded. And I feel when we do see Guillermo and his mom, those are real people with real emotions and real yeah. heartbeats and real, you know, uh, aspirations yeah. and desires. And, you know, the vampires are, are great. The vampires are great because they, you know, they're, oh, yeah. they're <laughs> eternal. They can live forever. So they don't have any consequences really to the actions uh, and don't really waste too much time with the mushiness of, you know, of it all. Right. But humans do. Right. We kind of like, especially if you are mm-hmm. a soft human who carries their feelings, you know, uh, on their, uh, what is it, your heart in your sleeves. Uh, and, yeah. and all of that. So it's really important to see that and to see rep- that represented on television yeah. it was really important to me altogether. Uh, not just because of, you know, the storyline of being Guillermo coming out and being gay, which is the whole premise of this episode and for him and his story mm-hmm. arc. Um, but also representation and the family that we see in the grandma and the talking, the con- conversing back oh, and forth, the dinner. God. It's so, how yes. fun was the family? You know, the family was so great. Oh my God. That was so cool to meet them. And then to have that whole dinner thing and that it was incredible and, and playing off everybody, just everybody's little personality, you know, it was so cool. It's so fun. For everybody. And, it's just and a- it was so like, it was. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say it was so greatly cast too because you've got just like in every family you've got like oh that cousin yeah <laughs> you know what I mean or you've got that that tia or like oh yeah she's the tia that does this yeah or she's that you know everybody can relate because if we are we're all the same you know yeah. it would it wouldn't play but also I the the badass family that that uh, the slays together you know vampire slayers. <laughs> Oh my God. The family that slays together stays, stays together, together, baby. Yes. I know. They were, <laughs> they were so, they were so amazing. The energy they brought. And that was a bad, that was a bad, I felt so badass. Yeah. During yeah. that scene. I feel, right. yeah. Every time I do the animal scene where he does get to like fight and do combat, I feel so badass. I don't you're know like, what it is about it, but you're like, yes. And it's powerful. And, and also this family walking down the street to go to the park would look like, any other Mexican family with the picnic basket. Yeah. But the fun part is like, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea who this magical family is. And and I love that because we're not assuming and we're yeah. teaching don't, don't, don't judge a book by its cover, you know, just by like, absolutely. Don't do it. Don't, you'll regret it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I know. It's amazing. Growing yeah. up, you know, I like I didn't see a lot of, you know, inspirations in American television anyways. Um, mm. Who were some of your acting inspirations growing up that you could see yourself or relate to at least? Oh, my gosh. Well, of course, you've got, you know, Rita Moreno. Mm-hmm. Hello. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, that's like she's she's such a groundbreaker. Right. Yeah. I and just got to me meet her. Being... I just got to meet her. Oh. Yeah. I'm just going to meet her because uh, she did Gloria Calderon Kellett's um, show one day at a time. Oh, and, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and it was just mind blowing. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was like, I mean, I'm a fan of West Side Story. And it was just oh. like, wow. And just just the nicest and such a wonderful human being. But yes, Rhea Moreno. Is, what an icon. Yeah. Yeah. Icon, right? Yeah. Was there others? And now 
Well, that's the thing. When I was growing up, there wasn't that yeah. much. Yeah. And most of the times people, this is so sad to say, but people would hide their ethnicity mm. in order to be able to play, mm-hmm. you know, which is, I remember, what was it? At the, the Tony, some, an actor came up and said that, the second that I was pronouncing my name a certain way so that it would be anglicized. Mm. And that just makes me very sad. Right. Yeah. And so there wasn't like a whole lot of that, you know, yeah. for me. Yeah. So Rita sticks out. But now, of course, now, of course, we've got Eva Longoria. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got so many wonderful people that are coming out and telling their stories. And now there's more inclusion. It makes me really happy yeah. to be able to see that. I mean, it's true. And to see it across. And it's not that long ago that, that I mean, that's, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't see myself represented, you know, and, and it became hard because even when I was coming up and that wasn't that long ago, um, I had one of my first agents ever when I was in high school um, was like, well, what do people call you? And I was like, Javi, you know, because if you know me, yeah. you know that my legal name is Javier. And Javi is what everyone called me. And I was like, Javi, Javi. And then it's like, well, what do you think of like Harvey? Harvey sounds like Javi. And I was like, oh, OK. And they're like, what about the last name? Let's change. And I was like, no, I don't want to change your last name. And they were like, okay, well, how about um, Javi, Javi Guillen, Harvey Guillen? Harvey Guillen sounds uh, pretty good. And then weirdly enough, when I was in school, because I went to in Orange County when I was little, I went to school where the teacher, for some reason, couldn't say my name. So she gave, No, it's the same with me. Yeah. yeah. And then she yeah. changed it. And so there was a period of time when people could just call me Javi or Harvey, and it kind of stuck. But a part of me was always like, I want to, I want to like, you know, I wonder if I go back to just with my because that's my legal name but also yeah. the fact that i got advice later in life where um i was talking to a friend of mine who's an actor and, and he somehow had a connection to like brad pitt and that the the moms the moms knew each other brad pitt's mom and his mom knew each other and oh. and, and that mom for my friend asked brad pitt's mom and said hey my son's an actor too do you have any advice for him and the one piece of advice that brad pitt gave him was, was change your name and i was like Brad Pitt wanted to change his name. And he's like, but it sounds like he got through the door. No, he said, change your name because once you get to a certain level, your name belongs to everyone. And so when you go into a room, everyone who says, Brad, Brad, and then you turn around, you think you know them. You're like, hi, do I know you? And it's like, no, I'm just a fan of your show. And I was like, oh, you're a fan. I thought I knew you because the name has now belonged to everyone. And so I thought about that. And I was like, you know what? Wow. If you know me by my legal name, your family and your friends. So when you call me by my name, I know how to turn and act and I know you. And if you know me with just a stage name, then I know how you met me and how the introduction was. And the introduction came from entertainment. And that's okay because I like to divide that my family and friends, like I'm very like protective of. Absolutely. And so that's something for me, like special with my family, my friends. I'm Javi. And then people have, have... heard about the story recently and they sometimes try it like in public like Javi and it's like I don't I don't know you but you know (laughs) do not know you like that you can call me Harvey you know maybe after a while when I get to know somebody it becomes like a like a little bit of a okay you can call me (laughs) like I know like uh the director on our show uh Yana uh after working here for so many years and she's so lovely uh she has nicknames for everyone you know um for Natasha and everyone and uh she was talking to me she's like what do people I was like well my when I was little they call me Javi and she's like oh why and uh she goes oh I wish I could call you and then she goes but I won't unless you feel comfortable and then after a while she she was so sweet and wonderful and, and, and I just felt such a connection with her and she kept trying, like she would say it accidentally. She was like, oh, Harvey, sorry, you said it again. Sorry, sorry, Harvey, ha- Harvey. And I was like, you can call me Harvey. Mm-hmm. And then so now <laughs> she calls me Harvey because it's almost like a, not everyone is in that small bubble, you know, but it really stood out yeah, to absolutely. me. Um, it really stood out to me that that was, that was, that was great advice actually because most people would change and you would think that this male who's Anglo-Saxon would be fine with his name. You're like, great, you're good to go. But even right, in right. his position, he was like, I wish I would have changed my name <laughs> because it belongs oh. to everyone. And I never thought about that. I was like, it does. Because no. when, when I'm in a crowded room, uh, if I, someone yells that, I know that's like, is that my is that my brother? Is that my cousin? That my, you know what I mean? Like, it's not someone I know. Someone's in danger. Like, they know me by that name. But if you know me as Harvey, 
that's great. You're you've met me through yeah. some kind of uh, introduction through work, a film, um, a TV show, which is great. Yeah, that'll be in a compartment in itself. And then I can still go home and uh, and know that's for me. So it makes me feel a little oh, better. <laughs> that's mind blowing, right? Because you never think about that. Like when your career is starting, you don't you don't think about those things. Yeah. Right? Like your yeah. advice, like once you start blowing up, it's like there are, I'm sure you have a lot more considerations than I do when I go, you know, to the, the store or something, <laughs> you know? We have way more fun in the afterlife. But, but it's so true about the name because I started saying, well, actually my dad, there's this weird story in my family. My dad says, we named you after Myrna Loy. Oh. And I was like, what? Yeah. But then it's like, I, I'm trying to get, but then my dad, my, like my dad and my brothers would say Myrna. My mom says Mirna. Mirna. And so I, Mirna. And so I know. You know, mm -hmm. and so like I'd be on set and I, and I went through the same thing. I'm like, I could, you know, and I'd say Myrna, too, because people are like, I can't do Mirna. I can't do Mirna. I can't. Do the, and I'm like, all right, well, it's so, Myrna, too. Myrna. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> Myrna. Mirna, and so, Myrna. <laughs> Myrna. <laughs> it's true. It holds a different place, yeah. in the, you know, in the mouth. But um, so, yeah, so I'd say like, you know, in reality, my name is both. You know, yeah. and it's like, but if you call me Mirna, I might be like, am I in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, that, mama. I, have yours. <laughs> I know. Isn't that weird? It's just like, because I, I mean, yeah, like the whole idea of that. And that was an agent who was uh, Mexican who recommended that, which later I was oh. like, that broke my heart because I was like, oh, but I see what he was doing because mm. he was part yeah. a product of his time of being told like you want to work in this business you got to get a stage name kid uh -huh. and and i was like wow <laughs> but then looking back it was like a like a happy mistake i guess because now i'm like actually yeah i'm kind of grateful that i did that because and you know a lot of like celebrities and stars and actors have changed they're not their names like miley cyrus you know what right, i mean like you go down right, the list right. and everybody everybody so it wasn't that terrible uh but because it doesn't change who i am and who i'm representing who i am to myself right. and and what i mean to my you know family and and the people that i love and so it just it blows my mind but do you think that the show itself does a good job of uh representing the hustle of uh the latinx people <laughs> financially stability guillermo <laughs> getting in the fridge wanting to provide for his family do you think they actually do a good job with that because i think that's kind of in our nature like it's like the hustle of that oh my god it just made it's like it's like how me and my brothers are with my parents it's like we want to give them everything yeah it's like, you know what I mean? It's that same thing. It's when you, I think it totally does, which is why I felt like it when I was on doing this part, I was like, it just feels like so natural and so at home. Yeah. It's just that wanting to like, especially being immigrants, you know, in the States, it's like, and you see how they struggled and my parents, you know, my dad was a waiter all his life, mm. you know? And so, it, but he provided for us and everything, but there were things we couldn't have. And so now it's like, Oh, I want to give you, you know, I want to, you know, we, we like talk about it. One of these days I was like, I'm going to buy you a house. I'm going to buy you a house. I want to buy you a house. You know, yeah. that would be like a huge, you know, thing, but it's, it, I definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's like, I feel it from you too. It's like, my mom needs this. I'm, I'm going to do what I, ha you know, I'm going to give it to her. She's going to get it. Yeah. You know, cause she's my, it's, it's just that. Yeah. We do that for each other. We fight for each other. Yeah. And absolutely. What do you think, you know, as my mom, what would my mom want for Guillermo as a job? What do you think her original want for him for a career must've been, uh, as a parent, you want to protect your kids, you know, and encourage your kids to pursue a career that's stable. Uh, I know that growing up, my mom would say, you know, vas a ser doctor, abogado, you know, like you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer. And I was like, I yeah. am. And I was like, it was decided, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, but we do that because we're afraid that they won't, you know, end up in a, in a stable job and, and whatnot. Uh, what do you think Guillermo's mom wished for Guillermo to be? Uh, if he, if she had to pick a profession for him. Okay. I'm going to tell you something because, um, yeah, just when you said that, 
my mine was secretary. <laughs> My dad was like, you need to be a secretary, honey, because then you can make, you know, that's a profession. That's a profession, right? yeah. And so they didn't, I was like a weirdo, right? A stenographer. A stenographer. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like boo, 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 Right. But so in, even in that scene, we were talking about where you work, like the panera bread, right? Mm -hmm. To me, I feel that I was proud of you no matter what you did. I really felt like, like, Guillermo's mom wanted him to follow his path because me, you know, and for personally following my path, I think that's where I felt that with you. And it was more like, but if I had to, if I had to, if you were like, no, you got to pick something, I would say is that if you had ended up in like management at Panera, I would have been like, oh my God. Right. You know, he's like, <laughs> he's a manager that he's a manager. He's like, you know what I mean? He's like, he's like, he's up there. He has a voice. He has this, you know, but I think at the end for m the way I chose her is that, and at the end, which reveals also when you come out, it's like, you, none of that matters to me. All of that is superficial to me. Mm -hmm. What matters to me is you. Mm -hmm. And my child being happy and fulfilled and confident in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like I really, I really felt that protectiveness of you. And when you came out, I'm like, of course, you know, yes, Nicole, yes, anything you want. Because I know the love is there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's most important. I'm not going to say that all families are like that. That's obviously. what I was going to say. I was saying that's a very beautiful <laughs> approach because not that's not always the norm, you know. Um, it's not. It's not always the norm with a lot of families. And so um, I'm glad that this episode we got to show what uh, what it could be like if you just lead with love and support your child yes. and support what their choice is and support who they are and when they actually feel comfortable enough to share uh you know, their true feelings that you listen and that you accept and open heart. Uh, so I'm really proud of this episode. This episode oh, is uh, kind of go down in the books. It's uh, one of my top favorites. And that's, you know, uh, a big part because of you and uh, and how you presented uh, Guillermo's mom. And I and just want to thank you for, for doing it. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> this is like a dream for me. It's so easy to play off of you. Aww. You're just so you give. I'm not kidding. You're just you're so loving and giving. But it's it, it's not even like it's a no brainer. <laughs> I felt it immediately on set. Aww. So thank you for giving me this. Because I did hear. I heard in wardrobe that you had like a, a large part in like picking also as well. Like making sure that it was authentic yeah and they had said that to me and and so they were like oh so like you're and i'm like oh so he like saw my tape and oh my god <laughs> and i was just like oh you know like <laughs> starstruck but but just all of that all of that to me and i lost my thought <laughs> where am i going with this no, just i the, don't know i'm a machine <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about how great it is to just you know uh, be working on the show together and do this episode and, yeah. and, and how easy and effortless it is to, to kind of bring these characters to life, especially with Guillermo's mom and yeah. Guillermo in the same yeah. uh, moment in this episode was so special and sweet. And, um, and I'm glad we, that everyone gets to see it now. So Guillermo is here. He's yeah. queer. Get used to it. And he's a badass. That's right, baby. <laughs> he is a badass. But before we go, we've been asking everybody. So this season, we obviously ah! opened Naja's, the nightclub. And we're asking everyone, if you had a drink or if Guillermo's mom had a drink at this bar, what would it be called and what would it be consist of? And a, and, and a human can drink it, not just a vampire, but a human. Well, I guess. Oh, we'll, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, the first thing that pops into my head is a mamacita libre. <laughs> <laughs> and what would that consist of? <laughs> oh, my God. It's got to be fruity. Yeah. So I think we're going to stick some, like, pineapple in there. Mm -hmm. Pineapple juice. A little mango or something. And maybe some coconuts. <gasps> yeah, a little mango, fruity, like, yeah. maybe a little rum. And Ooh. then maybe, can you, mix, can you mix rum and tequila? I think you, can you? <laughs> 
mixed rum tequila. They're both well. It's it's a clear rum. Maybe you could do it. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Whatever. It's Maybe? your, it's your like drink. A, you could do whatever you want. It's my drink. It's drink. Okay. So yeah. So so you put a little a little rum and tequila in there, and then you gotta have a cherry. Oh yes. Right. Oh, what if you start off and with the you, shot of tequila as your starter, and your chaser is the rum based, something like that. I like it. Something. Like and that. then you set it on fire. And you set it on fire. <laughs> you set the tiki like you know <laughs> sparks. Yeah. I love that. What would it be? So it would be called, okay, so we got the name, we got the ingredients. Um, Mamacita Libre. Mamacita Libre. That sounds delicious. I would totally order that. Because, that, you know, you get a shot right? and then you get like a chaser. So you could probably do both. I don't think if, yeah, you could probably put both rum and tequila together. I mean, you might have a hangover the next day, but that's okay. It's part of the fun. <laughs> it's just it's, part of the fun. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but if, what about if you, if, if Myrna had a drink that wasn't the character drink, what would that drink be or what's your go-to drink oh my god i love tequila on the rocks Mm. like sipping tequila Ah. like the real like yeah the very aged very aged tequila with a lime on the side like very simple and then yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because I also heard like agave it helps you lose weight. So I was like, <laughs> this is helping me lose weight. <laughs> uh, this, is right? my, this is my diet. I'm on a diet right now. I'm just drinking the yeah. Well, with that, we uh, conclude this week's episode. And thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so much to my madre mia, Mirna Cabello, oh, mijo. for joining. And- oh, I love it. <laughs> and, Gracias, uh, mi Javi. If you, oh? if you, <laughs> you can call me Javi. <laughs> you're, fam- you're part of the family now. Uh, if you want to say yeah. anything to the audience who have fallen in love with your um, portrayal of Guillermo's mom, with the show itself, what would you like to tell the fans? I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for all your love and support. I am like walking on cloud nine, just even being a part of this and go out there and just love, spread Mm -hmm. the love, Mm -hmm. spread the love and the acceptance. If you love me that much, then follow my example. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of following, where can people follow you on socials as well? Oh, I've got Instagram uh, and I've got it. Cabello dot Myrna. Mm-hmm. And then I still have Facebook because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off with Instagram and then they can follow we'll you there. Let's just do Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, yeah, you don't need to do anything else. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much. And Aww. we'll see you next time. Okay. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you. Behind the Shadows is a production of Straw Hut Media, hosted by Harvey Guillen, produced by Ryan Tillotson, Amada Sanchez, and Tyler Nielsen. Original music by Trevor Bumgar and Chris Hendricks, vocals by Maggie Glass. If you don't already, subscribe wherever you're listening, and make sure to follow Behind the Shadows podcast on Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content. And tune in live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific on the What We Do in the Shadows subreddit for an AMA with Harvey and special guests. Breathing is so overwhelming Heartbeats are a hassle Tell me why would anyone want to be alive Death might have a reputation Before she arrives But trust me, we have way more fun in the afterlife We have way more fun in the afterlife See you next week. Ha 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 ha